Let's kick it off. So it's new product time. Yep. Um, here's new product this song. the blinky, <laughs> blinky ball. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about this. So is, this is this is, is this? a really interesting project. This is from the same people who did Blinky Tape, or Friends in Brooklyn, and um, it's it's basically kind of like it's like an erector set for LEDs, I guess, or like a, I don't know, like how to explain it. It's like you basically get to make shapes by taking these um, little uh, pentagons, and I think also there's maybe some hexagons, and then by uh, soldering them together on the edge, and then you program them with a thing called a Blinky Buddy. It's a, which is in this box. I'll show it off on the overhead. You can make shapes, like for example, this dodecahedron, I think is the right name. Um, so I'll show it on the overhead because it's kind of neat. So this is the, the basically what you, what you get when you order it. Um, it's a PCB and then you can break off these little tiles. They're called blinky tiles. And you don't have to make a dodecahedron. You can make any shape or pattern you like. And each one has, it looks a lot like a NeoPixel, but it's actually a, a, a kind of smart LED that all shares one um, address pin. It's like a DMX type LED. It's like a DMX LED, if you know um, DMX lighting. And so um, it comes in this really nice package and you get this programmer with it. And this programmer, you connect it to your computer, and then you can use um, the included software. And it will drive the LEDs, and um, I guess you can, you can make it perform all sorts of patterns and stuff. And it comes in like a really nice package, too, so it's kind of retail quality. So you can make a ball or like a, a spiky star or something. Um, but we really like supporting our blinky tile, blinky tape friends in Brooklyn. So uh, pick one of these up. They look really fun. OK. And uh, I have a couple other photos. OK. So besides that, you know, nice graphic that and points and stuff. Um, that's what comes in the package. Yeah. It has these um, diffusers that you can use. Yeah, and you can use them. You can get multiple of them together and solder them together to make, like, sculptures and such. So you don't have to just make the cube. You can make any shape you like. Yeah, and here's the packaging to talk about. It's nice packaging. And then, yeah, they have some photos of showing. You do have to solder yeah. to put it together. But any soldering I will be able to do it. The pads are really, really big. OK. All right, well, next up, um, I'm pretty excited about this. Here it is. Wait, one second, I have to get it. You have to get it? Wait, okay. where'd it go? Do, 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 Okay, well, it's okay, because we need the photo. Oh, wait, no, here it is. Do, 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 do. I have a lot of electronics. Hey! Okay, what is this? This is the Teensy LC, and this is from PGRC, and this is a kind of, um, a microcontroller. What does LC stand for? I think it stands for low cost, and because oh, it's, yeah? a, it's kind of like the Teensy three, but it's a little lower cost. I think it like drops the regulator, and like maybe it has less flash or something. I'm not sure exactly. Okay. So you can check the product. It's super page. tiny. It's super teeny. It's teensy, and um, it has. Uh, what's cute is it has a little um, five volt buffer in the corner, which I'll point out as a fuse, and you can use a version of Arduino. It's it's not Arduino officially, but it can use a, a modified version of the Arduino IDE, um, and you can program it over USB to do stuff. So people uh, like these because they're very small and low cost. And we'll go to the next page. There's a lot of ADDs. There's like a DAC. It has capacitive yeah. touch capability. Um, yeah, this shows the difference. Like, so the, the chip went from a QFP to a QFN. Uh, the button changed a little bit. Maybe it's a little easier to press. Yeah. Um, a couple parts moved around a little bit. Um, but I think otherwise, it's pretty much pin compatible with the TNC 3.1. So if you like the TNC 3.1, you'll probably really dig the TNC LC. And then I'll just show it on the overhead. Yeah. Hold on. Zooming. Zooming. Do, you, do I need to zoom in at all? I can just hold right. it up. Um, so yeah, it's very small, and there's pads all the way around, and, and it doesn't have an onboard regulator, it seems. So you can just feed it five volts in. I don't think that's a regulator. I think that's like a programming chip. Um, so if you want to like power it from nine volts, I think you have to like put a different regulator. Like if you're powering it from a battery pack, but a lot of people these days can power stuff from a couple AA batteries. So maybe that's not a big deal. And then USB for programming, and then here's the main chip, and then here's a kind of like the reset, maybe bootloading button, and the little interface chip here. So yeah. if it works with the TNC 3.1, pretty much everything should work. There's a little 5 volt buffer, so you can drive NeoPixels that really like 5 volt logic directly. It has just a little miniature buffer in the corner on one pin. Yeah. So um, we'll see lots of fun projects with this. Yeah, and also for you guys who follow along, Paul is one of the, I'd say, uh, best contributors to this Arduino world as far as. Getting, getting cool stuff out he, there. He's the sixth Arduino member. Isn't it like, <laughs> the, the, like the Beatles, yeah. there's like the fifth Beatles? Yeah, you're the seventh or I'm something. I'm the seventh. Yeah. Uh, Mosfet <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay. Lung. All right, so check it out. Uh, if you love TNC, you will love TNC LC. Okay. Well, this is going to cause some problems, so what? I'm just going to show it. Um, it's the uh, it's the Zero Pro. Limited edition. It's a limited edition. I don't know what that means. It's coming yeah. with the debug chips. We ordered these a while ago, and they came in. We only got a couple. Yeah. Um, but we had the order booked already, so that's what it is. Um, this is the new kind of generation of Arduino. This is the Arduino Zero Zero Pro. Yeah. And this is kind of an interesting board. I have like one, well, I have two spares. I have one for me, and then I have this one I'm going to show off here. Um, it's interesting because uh, it's kind of it's separating away from the traditional 8-bit core that's been used in the Arduino and the Arduino Mega and even the Leonardo, um, and also on the tray, which has a Leonardo in it, and the Yun, which also kind of has a Leonardo in it. Um, instead of having like a separate Linux processor, um, this kind of goes the same way as the Douay-ish. Um, it uses a uh, Cortex M0 processor, which I think is probably running at like 40 megahertz or something. I don't remember the exact number. It's got a ton of flash, ton of RAM, and it has um, underneath the limited edition <laughs> sticker, which is kind of weird. I don't know why there's a sticker. It's this e-debug e uh, chip. Maybe I'll show it on the overhead real fast. Yeah, sure. Let's see this. Let's see if this is going to work. It can zoom in. Uh, it's going to be tough to read. But this is an e-debug chip. So... Um, I can also zoom in. Yeah, you want to try zooming once in? Once you get to where you want. I'm to in be. here. I'm staying. I'm not moving. Yeah, there. That's some good zoom in. Okay, too much. Too much. Okay, zoom in. Bam. Um, so yeah. So this is. There's two ports. This is. Uh, this says native USB. So this is what you would use um, to uh, connect external devices to, and this is a. Uh, a, B type, so you could use like a host, I guess you can do host processing, a USB host. This is the programming port, so you can you program it over the USB port. Um, and there's also debug capability. And so this chip is a special chip from Atmel that does the debugging for the main processor, which is over here. And what's interesting is a previous Arduinos used Atmel chips that had debug wire capability. And maybe you like read the data sheet and you're like, what's this DW pin debug wire? Well, I've never actually seen anything that could use it because they kind of kept the protocol under wraps. And it was kind of a pain to figure out. Nobody really wanted to reverse engineer. And even then, like, there was no good support for it. But apparently, Atmel has changed their mind. And with the, um, for, for this chip that's going to be used with the Cortex M0, they have a pretty good debug, step debugging uh, interface. You'll be able to step through line by line and like set checkpoints and stuff. And there's also a JTAG interface. Um, I believe this JTAG interface is for the debug port. And then there's also over here an uh, SWD for, it's kind of like JTAG, it's a way of Cortex M0s get programmed. It's a different connector. So I think this connector is for this chip and this connector for that chip. I don't actually know because I haven't hooked up my J-Link to it. But we do have a J-Links in the store. If you want to do direct JTAG programming or SWD uh, programming and debugging, we have a J-Link and an adapter in the store. Um, so you can try this out. But yeah, basically this little Cortex chip. And you can check the product page for the data sheet for this part. But other than that, it's pretty similar in um, size. Oh, can you unzoom? Dzoom. Yeah. Oh, Unenhance. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's very similar in size to an Arduino Uno. It looks pretty much the same size, except there's this extra port here. Uh, there's a switching converter here, which is kind of nice. Um, this is almost, yeah, this is this is all running on 3 volt logic, so just be aware in case you need something with 5 volt logic. If you want to drive like a NeoPixel from this, you might have to use a buffer like the TNC LC has. Um, you get an external chip to do that. Um, there's the buck converter over there. I think that's what this is, or a buck boost. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I think this is kind of, it, it's interesting that finally Arduino is heading in the direction of Cortex M0, which is funny because there's been for like almost six years now STM32 versions, uh, M3 or, or M0 now uh, versions of Arduino. This is going to be an officially supported version, and I think it's in 1.6. So. Uh, we only have a couple. We might be giving one away later. We'll see. Okay. So stick around. All right. Um, next up, so that's we all have, our details. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have two two similar products. So we'll, um, we'll go through them and then maybe we'll talk about. These are the, the touch screens. Oh yeah. This is the star of the show. Yeah. Besides you, this is the star of the show. This, this week. is the star of the show. So we, um, you know, we've just finished the uh, Pi Two 
uh, support for the Pi TFT, and it was about time, uh, good timing, because we've also updated the Pi TFT to fit perfectly on top of a Pi 2 or B plus, and it's great because now it works perfectly with those as well, especially the Pi 2, which I have here. Um, and so we um, updated the design of the Pi TFT uh, 2.8, both capacitive and resistive. As you can see, it fits really nicely on top of the Pi. And we actually don't have the photo up yet, but when we go to the overhead, I'll show you. Uh, there's also 40-pin GPIO breakout. So let's go to the overhead to start. So this is the capacitive one, which I think is the most beautiful. Um, and uh, we just have it running X11, and you can see it can sort of select stuff, and maybe I'll... This is uh, a Pi 2. This is a Pi 2. Look how fast it is. <laughs> It's pretty fast. So I'm going to just uh, log out. And you can so see you can also have the text console. So fast. And you, know, you can use your keyboard and you can, you know, hold on, LS. So you can run stuff from the console as well. Um, display images, display video. It works exactly like the Pi TFT that you know and love, but as you can see, it fits perfectly into this case, which I really like. And um, it, it's almost like it was designed to fit into our case because it, it fits perfectly nicely. Um, we will have a topper later that will fit over it, but for now, you can just leave it in like this and it, uh, it stays in place. And you can also put in some buttons if you'd like. And then um, this is the resistive version, which we also have. And I'm, I'm only going to put the demo for the capacitive. But if you look at the, uh, the bottom of the, the PCB, we use one PCB for both. And then here we have a really long 40-pin connector. So you can take your GPIO cable. And the previous Pi's only had a 26-pin connector. But now that the Pi 2 has 40 pins, we want to use all of them. So we kind of found a way to um, scoot this connector in. It's a surface mount connector. And then you can plug in the connector here. And then it plugs into a Pi, and you still have a 40 GPIO pin cable coming out. So you can use it with like a cobbler or whatever if you want to make like an arcade or connect sensors or whatever that you want to display in the Pi. So that's kind of like what took a long time is to get the, figure out how to get that 40 pin connector on there because not all places it would fit. But we did find the place eventually. So uh, check it out in the store. Uh, I think we didn't get them live and they're coming soon, but they'll be in the store on Friday. So okay. sign up. So I, what I did is I have the other set of photos. I mean, they're nearly identical, but I... Oh, yeah, yeah, show them off. Bing. So this is the capacitive. You can see it's all really black. Okay. And this is the resistive. You see there's a silver lining. But it's pretty much the same. Oh, uh, it acts the same lining. as long as you uh, use the high TFT image we made. That's cool. So there's a silver lining on certain things. This one has a silver lining. Okay. Well, um, guess what, Lady Ada? That is the new products. That's Yay! it. You did it. You did it. Hooray, hooray, okay. hooray. You did it.